Okay, thank you for tuning into Stampscaping 101. This is, this is a scene that I'm just finishing off right now. I can't stop working on it, but I figure if I shoot this introduction for this video, then I'll stop. But I'm really enjoying adding in this kind of background uh, pigment ink application. I use the hero hues, the brilliance, and color box frost white pigment ink in here to kind of diffuse that background and to kind of push it back in space making this two-dimensional scene hopefully look a little bit more three-dimensional in this scene we're working with um, a half page coated matte stock okay not glossy but I've used a lot of the gel pens in here well, not a lot of the gel pens. Alcohol pens is what I'm talking about. And I've really tried to push space. I've applied a pretty heavy saturation of um, a wide range of uh, wide range of values of the alcohol-based pens on my foreground trees. And the background trees were stamped lighter, and then they have been colored lighter, and then really given the treatment of with uh, three different uh, pigment inks in here. So I've avoided using um, uh, dye-based inks on this scene altogether except for my impressions of the tree trunks. Okay, the foreground uh, objects were done in a Versafine, but I didn't use any type of sponging at all. And uh, just more of a direct paper types of applications with um, you know the different media so I think this is a really highly textured piece um, with all the imagery and the alcohol pen work on the, the trunks and then of course the uh, softening of everything in the backgrounds and lightening of it uh, using the uh, various pigments so anyways um, just a really fun experiment I usually don't work in this size but sometimes I you know, you have to do it to uh, kind of play around with what you want to do. So, so many things are an experiment in this piece, so I kind of want, wanted to work large so I'd have more space to kind of uh, work out some different types of strategies that I thought I might uh, come up with, you know, or encounter. And uh, I also wanted to check out how um, different types of media applied over other types of media, such as um, how would gel pens work over layers of alcohol ink, um, how would the Versafine stamp out over, you know, layers of um, pigment inks and so forth. So, I don't know, everything, you know, worked out okay. It's kind of a mishmash to say the least, but I think we made a pretty decent um, graphic statement here in terms of this landscape and uh, kind of what I was going after. Didn't really have anything real definitive in mind, but I wanted to create kind of a shallower um, arrangement of objects in terms of, uh, you know, how far they back they represented in space from one another. Usually I have some kind of sky in the background or clouds or, you know, distant mountains or something like this. This represents something like 20 feet probably. So it's just, uh, I guess the background could be just pure light or something like that. One of the things I, I wish I, you know, maybe I'll go and add a little bit more shadows, you know, down here. It's not dark enough for um, how um, bright that light is, but I don't, I don't want to get too dark down here. But see, I'm also using a little bit of uh, the uh, colored pencils on here too. So I don't know, just a real fun kind of a um, multimedia experiment here um, as far as this forest goes. So. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning into the channel. If you choose to watch it, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, I don't know, I hope you kind of experiment around with some of this stuff too. I mean, look at the textures in this bark right here. It's just really fun to do with um, your alcohol markers and uh, gel pens and uh, colored pencil. Things that, I don't know, a lot of you probably have, in, some of you have in mass already in your, um, your repertoire of supplies that you've... Uh, kind of uh, amassed, if you're like me. Now we just have to use them, right? Anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning into the channel, as always. OK, 
Okay, let's see what we can do about creating um, some kind of space within a half page matte piece of cardstock. Um, I don't know too much about this paper. It's just a, a ream of paper that I bought um, from uh, this place called Kelly Paper probably 20 years ago. It's been a really long time. It says Appleton Papers. Don't know if something like that's still around, but this was the Utopia. Uh, cut size coated. So it's a matte coated paper. It's 80 pound uh, cover stock. But um, I would imagine that this paper is going to be similar to just about any other type of coated matte cardstock. Mine is actually getting a little bit yellowed. Uh, just from age, so um, I don't think that'll really matter at all, you know, by the time I get done with this, but um, as is a lot of my um, videos, this one's not so much instructional, but it is as it is experimental. Um, but I have an idea of what I want to do, and that is I want to stamp out kind of a, a forest trees. I don't want to make it too deep though in terms of imagery, okay? I want it fairly shallow in this one um, in terms of uh, the visual space that we can see in it, but what I want is kind of a backlit kind of a almost a, I wouldn't say a blinding white light, but a very strong one coming in from the background, okay? Then that's why I don't want to have too many things um, too deep in terms of, uh, you know, spatially in it, because I want that area in the background to be kind of, you know, washed out in, uh, you know, some brilliant light. And uh, I don't know, I got my idea for that um, from seeing something, and maybe it was, maybe it was a photograph or something like that, and I thought, I need to play with kind of a shallower depth, you know, um, instead of always going for really deep space, which I really love doing, but, um, you know, we want a little variety uh, in our scenes, and we want to play around with uh, imagery and uh, seeing what uh, the, the stamps can do in a variety of different uh, settings and media. Okay, now this one's called Mossy Covered Trunks. And uh, I'm not sure how many of these I'll do. I'll do, I'll do a couple impressions of this larger one. And then I thought I would do a smaller one in here, just for some variety. And the smaller one will represent something a little bit farther back in space. So uh, if you've watched my uh, video on. Um, space, it's usually the higher you stamp something, the farther back in the distance it, it's supposed to represent. Okay, And that'll be the case here. Alright, on this one, maybe I'll stamp it a little bit lower. So if I'm stamping it lower, it means it's closer to us. Okay, I'm almost stamping it off the page uh, down below here, but I think it's right on the line. Not that it has to be. I just want to go for a little bit of variation to avoid kind of a, you know, picket fence type of uh, placement of uh, um, repetition of designs, of the same design, I should say. So if you just kind of play around with your placement of it. Now see this one to me, you know, it almost feels larger just because we've stamped it lower down I mean it's closer to us okay now I've stamped out more of the image because it's on there but I don't know it just feels bigger even though it's you know exactly the same so just a little tweak there I mean it's obviously not a different image but um, you know at first glance you know to you know someone that's seen your scene I don't think it's going to be um, kind of a distraction as far as the, you know, an image being repeated like that. Okay. All right. Let me see if my stamp, yeah, my stamp will fit on this one. This is my 
acrylic blocks equipped with a uh, fitted with a uh, tack and peel. Okay, I'll go in the center. Same image, smaller scale. So, being that smaller, it could represent. Um, smaller trees, but in this case it'll represent something farther back. Okay, let's go with this one right here. I might want to play around with this one a little bit in terms of um, value, okay? A lot of th times things in the distance are a little bit more obscure. Now this one is not supposed to represent something so far back, um, but Maybe we'll play around with value anyway. Maybe stamp it out and then stamp it again so it's lighter. Hmm. I'm thinking it's hard to see if I uh, hard to tell if I've taken off too much ink. You know. I'll just go like that. And go with the second impression. Always have these um, tree trunks going off the top of the page. Otherwise I'm gonna have, you know, kind of that abrupt ending somewhere within the scene, which is not what I want. So tree trunks, for me, I usually stamp them um, off my, off the top of the page. Now I'm going to overlap this tree trunk here a little bit, so I'm just going to mask it off a touch like so. Mossy trunk small. Oh, good. Uh, that's about what I wanted in terms of uh, the value of it. You can see it's lighter in value, okay? So it looks like it's a little bit farther back. Do I do another one? I think so. Okay, I'll do another impression of it, and I'll kind of put it in, right in here. Got to blot it off. This time I took off, I, I think I did. I, took, I think I took off a little bit more ink. It's always hard to tell though, exactly, so. Masking off a tree. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to utilize um, part of the stamp. One of the good things about scenic stamps is what you do is if you just want to use a part of one of your stamps, then just don't ink up the rest of it and just stamp out a portion of the stamp that you do want. So I'm taking off this ink. I'm doing it with a wet paper towel to make sure that I remove off uh, all of the ink that I can. If I want to be really careful, maybe I spend a little bit more time kind of cleaning it off, but I tend not to be too careful of a rubber stamper in general. So it's not something that I really worry about. Okay, so just this trunk is inked up, blot it off, and let's figure out where to put it now. When I put it now, hmm, let's go ahead and do, I'm going to stick it in between um, a couple of these trees. 
All right, so I need a little more masking material. <laughs> this is my masking material. It's always very, very simple. And I slightly undermask. When I say slightly, it's probably an eighth of an inch to almost a quarter inch because these tree trunks, while they're not silhouettes, they are fairly solid, the ones in the foreground I'm talking about. So let's get a bit of this tree in between the foreground tree and hopefully it stamps out a little bit lighter. Yeah, it does. See that right there? It's just lighter so it looks a little bit farther back and uh, we have layering going on in terms of uh, imagery. When you have a repetition of imagery, of the same imagery, shapes and whatnot, it creates a continuity within your scenes. Too much of an easier mask, masking assignment than that. Remember to kind of have the tree trunk running off the top of the page. Okay. And let's go for one more. Well, one or two more. Easy composition so far though. We're talking about just two stamps and it's going to be filling up, I don't know, 90% of the scene. Now, if I had one of these mossy trunk stamps, I could do the whole forest with that. And then, I mean, it, it wouldn't be playing around with scale as much because ones, they'd all be the same size, but you could use just one, okay? Just stamp them a little higher, a little lower, one of them or two of them in full black. The, you know, the other ones maybe with a second impression of a, you know, previous stamped off image, or, I don't know, you can possibly even stamp it in gray, you know, ink instead of uh, black, you know, blotted off black. Let's go with something else here. Not something totally different, but um, let's go with the other tree. Okay, so I'll use this tree and I'll use this one. This one has less um, branches, so give me a little bit more variety. It's going to be in the background, so it's more of a subtle variety, but you have the stamp, you might as well make use of it. And push it in, in terms of uh, your use of it. And this one will give me a little bit of variation, although I don't really need a lot of variation, but we have it, might as well. I don't think I'll use just the middle uh, trunk alone, because that would you know, involve me kind of getting in there and coloring it. I'm too lazy to do that. Okay, so I have that. Boy, that's a lot of monotony, huh? We'll see what we can do about that. But, I don't know, that being said, in a forest, I don't know if monotonous is the word, but there's going to be a lot of similar looking trees, I bet. And I have seen that. That's why I tend to... I love hiking in forests and stuff, but... Um, I don't like it, hiking in 10 miles of it. I like to get out, you know, where I have some great panoramic views and vistas to look at. Out at. Okay, I'm going to change the angle of this one slightly. Have it going at an angle just for some variation. It's slightly angled anyway, but uh, I got a little bit of the branches right there, but that's okay. Um, Okay, so there's our basic composition. It looks really, really cluttered, doesn't it? In terms of, uh, um, uh, textures, okay? We 
need to mellow them out a touch. And we'll play around with uh, the thing that I'm really wanting to play around with a lot with, which is um, back lighting in here. All right, so we have two stamps so far. I'll stamp some other things on the on the on the ground area too. Um, the ground in the foreground will help to also create variation within the scene and continuity. You have a lot of these impressions of the same thing, so what you do is you can just kind of play around with it a little bit on the base surface and to kind of blend these all together. Um, it's kind of interesting them kind of going down like that. Maybe there'll be like some heavy mist or something like that. I still love using um, things like uh, white pigment ink and I have so many different brands of it now and I think, I don't know, it'll be easier to get to what uh, my idea is as far as a general concept goes. But we'll see what happens along the way in this scene. Okay, this is my spiny branch stamp. Do I want that at the base? Thinking about it. Or do I want more of like a floral thing? Not floral, but you know, real leafy greens. Well, something's telling me the spiny branch. Let's go ahead and try it. going to do is I'm going to trans... Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to uh, transition. Yeah, I knew it was a trans word. Uh, I'm going to transition this print from pretty dark to very light down here. Just by mopping off some of that base uh, imagery. Okay. It doesn't have to be done like that, but... Um, I thought I might put this, these trees in a little bit of fog or something like that. You know, something for the, uh, this light, you know, that we're going to represent in here to be, have something to kind of reflect off of, you know, in terms of like moisture in the air. Okay. So something like that. And then let's do it on the other side. do the same thing, or I don't know, do I need to? Since this one's going to be stamped lower, maybe I don't need to. I'll just kind of put it over here, coming in from this side. You kind of put the similar images on the left and right side foregrounds. It creates kind of a nice uh, lead-in texture, especially if you kind of leave the center open like that. You don't have to leave it real, you know, wide open, but Let's go for another one, actually. I have it right here. I like that shape right there, but I want to break it up a little bit with uh, some kind of, kind of more organic form, like something like that. All right. So, hmm, feels ominous in there with these kind of prickly branches. You don't want to touch them. You kind of want to kind of stay away from them. All right, now in this scene, I'm going to do some experimentation as far as my usage of uh, media goes. I'm going to keep this pretty simple, and I'm going to approach it primarily with some pens, you know. I'll keep the coloring very simple in terms of techniques and whatnot, but I want to go for a lot of texture. I want to uh, bring in, you know, some various gel pen colors, um, some browns, and... Uh, I hope I have kind of an olive green type of color. But that being said, let's take a look at some colors that we might have. I see these as, I mean, you can turn these trees into whatever you want. But I think for me in this one, I'm going to keep in that spirit of the, uh, the name of the stamp, 
mossy covered um, trunks and uh, I'm going to consider kind of a range kind of like this right here all right you don't have to get into the specifics but what you'll notice here the big thing about this is you know there's lighter tones in here and then if I'm going into greens I'm not going into something really harsh I'm kind of going into the pale versions of it if you have something like that and uh, remember I'm just kind of working on matte paper you can work on other types of papers you know if you have your these are La Plume permanents but you know uh, your traditional marker uh, surfaces like a cryogen or something like that those types of papers um, should work just fine maybe better I don't know but we'll see what we'll see what we end up doing here I'm not sure what to uh, use the back side of this paper um, hmm you know what I want to do too so far it's in grayscale and I think I want to use a pale gray. Let's see. All right. So what I'm going to do here, these are for the most part kind of side shaded and the interiors are a little bit lighter. Okay. That's to give it this kind of volume three dimensional form. Okay. But I think for the coloring, I'm going to do more of the center shading, okay? Now this is a really pale, this is called cool gray. This is cool gray number three. I don't think that's the Pantone, you know, color name of it or anything like that. So I don't, it might just be for Marvy, I don't know. But basically this is probably a, I don't know, 7% gray, maybe something like that. It's, it's pretty light. Okay, and <laughs> now when I'm doing it this way, maybe I do try to stay within the lines. Normally I don't at all, but it's not like this is tedium. It's pretty easy just to keep it in there. You don't have to get all the way to the edge either. But I'm not going to keep too much of the light, you know, not real light. Uh, um, values in terms of the shapes here because it's going to be backlit, you know, so get, I am getting this, you know, fairly colored in and easy enough, okay. Flipped it around and upside down just so I can get into it from easier from this side, okay. Might actually use some workable fixatives on here, but it just depends how uh, my gel pens take to it. Maybe, maybe even some colored pencil. I'm not a color pencilist. I'm not particularly good with markers either. But the way that I use them, <laughs> it should be easy enough. The way that I use it is. Kind of like the way I use all inks, I just kind of start working with, with uh, some very pale values, and I just increasingly get a little bit darker and darker and darker. I don't know how dark I'm going to get on this one, but I probably don't even want it too dark. All right, now that was uh, that gray. This is a very, very light beige color, okay? It's probably a, I don't know, like a under 7%, like a... 5% beige. It is super light, but what this will do is it'll give me a little bit of warmth. Okay. You don't have to color the whole thing. You can just kind of do little bits here and there. It is warming up my trunks a little bit. If you can see that. When I do it this way too, and with other inks, um, you know, dye-based ink technique or whatever, 
it's uh, it's an easy way to work. It's very forgiving. You know, if you don't like something that you've laid down, but this pen, if you have pens like this, it is so light. You really don't have to worry about kind of uh, unintentional marks that might look, you know, be a bit obtrusive to the uh, kind of the harmony of the scene or the technique that was used in it. It's almost like laying down, uh, it's so light. It's almost like laying down some very pale chalks or something like that. Speaking of that, if you had some pan pastels or something like that, you could easily go in here and color these in with that, something like that. Maybe you do multi, multiple, um, multimedia on it. Alright, let's see here. Is this getting fairly dark? Eh, a little bit. Okay. Green, pale green. Hmm. Uh, well, let's try it. Uh, this is the, uh, the camel. Okay, I'm kind of putting it in the darker area just to kind of test it. If I didn't like it, there are still other things I could do, but... I don't want to get too dark with it and then have to somehow kind of blend that all in. It wouldn't be hard or anything like that, but it would create a little bit of an extra step for me. I'm saying if I didn't like it and just wanted to kind of blend it in. Alright, now this one I'm not putting everywhere. Let's go down here in the trunk a little bit more. Okay. All right. Moving into the green. This is a. It's called melon. Basically, it's just a very light green. It's like a sea mist green, but a very light version of it. Okay. I'm just going to go right over the top. Blend it in. Remember, there's a lot of textures and things like that already in the design itself. So it's inherent in the texturing and design. So with coloring, you don't have to do too much. I mean, you certainly could, but you don't have to because so much of the uh, tonal statement is done in the design. Um, okay, I'm placing that on some of my backgrounds imagery my lighter tones. I'm going to keep these ones out because I might have to do in some blending blending in of the uh, darker tones. If it gets a little bit too harsh, uh, let me see. That one's a little bit darker and more... Yeah. Sure. Okay. I'm trying to make some decisions here. Let's test this one out. Let's it's not a real bright green, but over the tops of my other colors, which are pretty dull, you know, it's, you know, fairly bright, relatively speaking. All right, that looks pretty good. Right there. I mean, that, I don't know, that's really starting to look like a kind of natural wood to me. Or, I don't know, some kind of, you know, surface. I'm surprised at the brightness of the uh, the colors here. Uh, 
Um, I'm saying that because it's on matte paper and I'm just kind of using these glossy, um, not glossy, but transparent, you know, alcohol paste pens. Looks okay. I guess it is a coated paper, it's just matte though. These two pens. Did I just use that one, or this one has the elm green? Ooh, no, I didn't use that. Super bright though. Wow, it's kind of cool though, especially with that kind of that brown in there. There in some areas. Definitely warmer. It has more yellow in it than any of the other um, greens that I've used so far, or that one green at least, melon. Hmm. So, so that variation is kind of interesting as far as the surface goes. Uh, I mean, it definitely looks old, which you know I kind of want. Want it to look. This is a jungle green. We're getting fairly dark here. I'm looking for some shadows just to kind of fill them in a little bit more with this um, value green. a little bit of textures if you want to as well but anyways this yeah, it looks okay you get variation when you layer things like that I mean doesn't that look like look like you know there's moss or lichen growing on the tree see that I mean, it's kind of a lot of colors but I don't know if I, I had less it would be fine too I've probably covered up a lot who knows, but maybe those subcolors are kind of affecting their overall, maybe? I don't know. Um, let's start addressing some of those in the back. Okay, now some of those in the back, I I do want them kind of to be a little bit obscured. I don't want them to be quite as defined, but right now they're really looking fairly... Um, anemic. Okay, I'm just going and coloring up a little bit. Brownish gray. Ooh, I love that one. See, this is what I'm doing here. I'm kind of going like this, you know, that type of thing over the tops of the trees. You know, so, you know, I don't want to do so much like this. Maybe not with the darker color. Well, maybe this isn't too dark, but I want it more kind of scribbly, you know, to go along with the uh, kind of the textures of the of the tree trunk.
Okay. They're looking a little bit more uh, dimensional, I think. It's interesting. Um, kind of the feel of this when I when I touch that alcohol, it's just there's so much kind of built up there that it feels a little bit sticky to to the touch. But when I'm looking at my hands, I I don't I, mean, I got something from from there, but it feels a little bit like that sticky alcohol build up, you know, that you 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 get when using alcohol inks. I used to use a lot of alcohol inks um, with alcohol pens back in uh, the late 80s, I think it was. And that's back when there didn't used to be a lot of alcohol media out there, but there was this pen company called Studio 2. And, uh, I don't know, they were marketing a lot of their products to be, you know, kind of an alternative to the real smelly, uh, kind of design or comprehensive uh, types of uh, pens out there that had a really strong odor. Uh, they still do, because I think they're still out there, but um, um, the alcohol pens were kind of a, a nice... Um, variation or a nice uh, option. For me, um, I wasn't taking too many design classes, though. It was more in illustration and things like painting classes, but um, things like the industrial design, di designing students, and uh, maybe a little bit of the graphic design students um, use those in kind of their upper division classes. All right, that was the kind of green. I'm going you know, darker and darker here, but I need to kind of blend it out a little bit now with a really light tone of a uh, apricot here. One of the things that's going through in my head is how, what I'm going to do down here on the base. I might put something down there. I, I didn't think I would, but uh, I think we do need some sort of forest floor type of uh, uh, situation. All right, let me see something here. Let me go on with this darker one. Hit some of these little details. There's these little knots in the tree design, and uh, I'm just going to hit a couple of those and reiterate that kind of little bit of... Uh, um, kind of modeling darkness on the trees. That's what I like doing with shadows. I just, I like to reiterate it with whatever media I'm using. So it's usually dye-based inks, but in this case, just some pen work, you know, just coloring, but coloring with variation, I guess it could be described as. Now these pens, you know, Copic markers are you know the brand that you know and have heard about, but um, those will be you know probably the best. I, don't, I haven't had any problems with these, and I don't want for more. You can't refill these ones, but um, I'm just I don't know. I have a couple packs of these, but if you're kind of limited on a certain range or something like that, and you know you can mix and match brands. There's even uh, you know, gigantic pen sets online. Um, I don't know what the quality of them are, but um, where you can get, you know, some pens for very cheap, you know, uh, uh, 50 cents a pen or something like that. But you can kind of supplement your um, existing uh, range, if you have pens, you know with additional ones, or if you want to try to, you know, set, you know, start out and, you know, get a huge um, range of uh, different hue and uh, values of those hues, then, I don't know, it might be something you want to look into. Um, 
as far as those pen sets go. Because these alcohol pens are really great, because, um, you know, for the most part, maybe there are certain ink um, paper combinations out there that, where it just doesn't work quite as well. But um, for the most part, you know, I can stamp out my imagery in uh, um, a water-based, like dye-based ink, and uh, just color right over it with these um, alcohol-based pens, and it's not going to smear and, you know, make my uh, imagery all runny, you know, because it has a different binder. One's, you know, uh, alcohol and one's water-based, so... Alright, this is going with a pretty bright green, apple green. like that. It's like a lime green. And I just added that to my foreground a little bit. It's kind of looking a little bit hot, but um, I'll kind of tone that back a little bit um, later. All right, so going back to my idea of some foreground in here. Let's use some of my sedge filler stamp. Okay, I'll stamp it off a little bit for a lighter impression in the background. And I'll go for a heavier impression, maybe in the foreground, I don't know. All right, now there's something that's missing to me a little bit in here and I have these forms, this kind of this uh, branch right here, in the foreground, okay? But we don't have anything at the base back here, so if we want to create a little bit of a repetition of form, then I can take that one, I can use the tops of it and stamp it back here, but let me see if I have my smaller version of it um, to kind of stamp at the base of some of these trees. And I, I have a plans for these um, bare branches as well uh, that I'll do later with some gel pens. Okay, I have my smaller version of it. It's quite a bit smaller than the larger version. But those will be good for background textures. Just one of those little additions, you don't have to add it in. Or you can use, if you have other types of little bushes or reeds, you know, or something like that, you can do that. off the bottom a touch, okay, not too much. Go with something like right here. Looks like to be some sort of a plant that grows at the base of uh, these particular trees, maybe. That one, eh, maybe I shouldn't have stamped it off. I like it a little bit darker, so let's go with a darker version. We just skew it a little bit, bring it up, like so. Get one down there. It's kind of filling in, isn't it? You know, a little bit more. Like that. Just like that. This over here. Okay. Eh, good enough. Okay. Looking at my table to see if I have a Sharpie pen here. I'm going to take uh, that person's advice. I'd have to look back at the comments, but you're the one who said to make an X on the back of this tag and feel so it's easier to find. 
I did read, and you know, I was a very slow learner, so I, I thought the second time you wrote that, um, I thought I, I need to do that. But as you can see, I haven't done it yet. But, but it's definitely on my uh, to to do list. Okay, I love my little tiny rocks stamp here, just for some added texture down here. Uh, the grass is okay, but uh, I want a little bit more texture. Okay. Say something like that. Tiny rocks. I love um, texture stamps like that um, because you can really go in and uh, I mean, it could be used in any scene that you have, practically. Unless you have a scene that says, you know, texture-free environment or something like that. No textures allowed. But it's not tropical. It's not, you know, desert. It's not forest. It's all, you know, it's any of them. All of them, any of them. So you can kind of use it around everywhere. All right, we have all this grass down here, so let's add in some, uh, I don't know, surface, I guess you can say. Now, this would be a good instance to utilize, like, some, uh, you know, sponging technique in here. But let's see what we can do without it, okay? Ew. A bit too bright. All right, I just put all my pens away. Let me just grab them again. It's easy with the color indexing on there. Okay, to go in and uh, kind of like I do with them. Um, kind of using the side of this like this now. I, I want to go for some variation. Nothing too harsh anywhere. Oh yeah, I forgot about my colored pencils. Uh, maybe I can play around with some of that. Oh, and the gel pens too, for some texture. Kind of adding some down at the base of the trees for a little bit of uh, kind of anchoring and shadows. Some green, melon again. Deciding, um, let's see, camel, hmm, kind of added around where a lot of my little tiny rocks have been added at first to kind of uh, put them in a little bit of a shadow.
this is the uh, brownish gray again. Love that color. All right, it's looking a little bit crazy down here, so I'm going to have to kind of blend that together. So what I do is I go darker, and then I go back to a lighter tone. Now this isn't like one of those kind of more sealed off papers, but you know, I think it'll kind of blend in there slightly. You know, being that this paper is coated, I'll be at matte, so it's not quite as sealed off. Uh, adding that down like so. This paper's getting kind of sticky with all these layers of alcohol ink. And not really in a bad way or anything like that, but it's definitely tacky to the touch, you know, especially right here where those trees are really kind of modeled with a uh, tone and texturized with uh, ink. Okay, all right. Now, this is something that I do a lot of. I might as well just do it right now, but see all these rocks in here, these tiny rocks. I'm not gonna do it with every single one of them. Maybe that might be a little bit too dark of green, but um, I do see them as being, you know, look at them as objects, so I'd like to add a bit of a shadow underneath them. That's a little bit too light and bright. Now let's do that with the darker one. And then if this is too dark, I'll tone it out uh, later, but what is this? Jungle green. I'll just put a little bit of a kind of dot, or you can kind of color right over the uh, these dots, maybe on the lower side of it though, so it's not going over the top of it, but what that does is it kind of anchors them a little bit more with a little bit of a shadow, because I'm going to have these trees backlit, so the light is going to be coming in. Maybe I'll hang the shadows down a little bit more. You know, kind of like, here's a shadow, then I'll have it coming down here more, you know, like you know, creating longer shadows, although I don't want them creating too long of a shadow because, you know, they're very, you know, short. They're not like these tall objects casting tall shadows or anything like that. When I said I won't do all of them, I meant uh, I'll just do like 90% of them, apparently. <laughs> I don't know. I love doing that type of thing, like little detailed parts here and there. So, for me, doing those little things like that, it's really not tedium. It's really just, uh, you know, for me, it's fun. All right, looking at my set of pens, I have this color right here, aquamarine. It's a little bit of blue. If you have kind of a light blue, it, it, it goes well in areas that you kind of you wouldn't suspect sometimes. Sometimes it's over brown or something like that, but if you just kind of hang this light blue over things, it's, uh, I don't know. It, it, it's like reflective of, you know, your sky colors or something like that, but, you know, I could even put it over some of these trees or whatnot. It kind of, it kind of unifies things in a way, in a very subtle way, though.
kind of blend out some of those shadows a little bit. It's reconstituting some of the uh, inks on here and getting on here a little bit, but just do a quick little scribble and you're free from that. All right, now, I don't know. Let me see if... Um, I'm not even sure if I can get any uh, types of a uh, little this is a colored pencil. And subtle. There's grassy little tufts down here, and I can go in and... What I'm doing is this type of thing. And in the grass. I don't know if you can see it um, at all <laughs> in the video, but it's just kind of darkening in some of the shadows there. I look at the design, you know. I mean, I could see it, you know, on here too, but it's little areas. I'm just kind of going in there and redefining some of it or defining it a little bit more with color. Okay. So, you, you know, I say... Uh, you know, you darken your shadows that are in the stamps. Well, you can do the same thing with something like this. I need a pencil sharpener for my colored pencils here on my desk. Okay, this is a uh, dark green. I can add some to my trees as well, maybe. Hit some of the shadows. Ooh, that looks like pretty good. <laughs> it's right up my alley in terms of uh, not being a colored pencilist. I'm not good at that, but uh, yeah, I'm not practiced at it at all. But um, I like being able to work something from very light, you know, to dark like that. So when I start laying it down here, I can just kind of lay it down in a very light application. And then, you know, as you work on it, you can kind of define it more and more as you go. Just make it as dark as you want. So, you know, but you have to kind of watch it, though. You know, you don't want to get into a situation with any of your meeting and just say, oh my gosh, you know, I, you know. It just happened, and there's something that you didn't want, you know. But if you just kind of work it, you know, from a, a light shade of uh, some existing hue or tone, then uh, you can kind of manipulate it to go whatever direction you want. Just by adding more of it, okay? So just add it nice and slowly. This is what I'm doing here, right, by the way. It's like this. Going here and there. You know, my trunks. And it, I don't know, it's it's laying right down on the, uh, over the top of the alcohol marker. It's just fine. It, I do see an application of it happening. Okay. Now, <laughs> that being said, if there's anything else you wanted to stamp on there, it's probably a good idea to do it before you start laying down waxy coatings of uh, of colored pencil, okay? Because I don't know if that uh, ink would stick to uh, something else. I mean, it might, but maybe a Versafine or something like that over the top of uh, colored pencils would work. I'm not sure. Or maybe we'll lay down some uh, workable fixative, too. Okay, so let's see. We're talking about going doing something in the spirit of multimedia. Let's try out some um, gel pens. I'm looking for one in my gigantic set. I always show this in every video because who knows how many, what videos people have seen before, but this is a 360 pack. It's not really 360 colors, but it's 180 gel pens plus 180 refills. Uh, by Shuttle Art, okay? And they're like a, I don't know, like a dime each or something like that. 
you know, uh, literally. So it was, I don't know, it was something like that. Mine cost $26, but it went up to a, you know, a huge amount to like 30 or something like that, but, you know, an extra $4 distributed amongst, uh, you know, 360 parts is not too bad. I'm, I'm looking for a dark green or a brown or something like that that's not a glitter version. The glitter ones have a little speckles in it, too. Okay, now this one, there's no colors on this. I, I don't expect for a to have the colors printed on here, you know, for a, you know, a 10 cent uh, pen either, but, all right, this one's, uh, it's a little bit of a warm brown. Uh, ooh, okay, this goes on beautifully on the, uh, on the, uh, alcohol-based pens. Hmm. I can add on some really great textures here. Just scribbling around. I uh, boy. I don't think you'll you can see that at all in the video. Well, maybe you can. It's a nice way to go back in and add some uh, some additional texture or coloring. It's kind of the co this color is kind of the same value in terms of light and dark as the objects in, that I'm doing it over. So it doesn't stand out too much, but I am getting a nice kind of a variation in hue by doing this. And anytime you can add, you know, some additional subtle textures onto any given surface, it makes that surface potentially that much more uh, rich in terms of uh, you know, your visuals. All right, now well, that's brown. Boy. I do love the textures, okay. I could see it more than I expected. I, I, I kind of expected it to blend in with the background more. Maybe it's the fact that it's um, a coated paper. All right, let's see if I have a green or dark green of some sort. Um, you would think with 180 pens I, I would. Oh, here we go. It looks like that's about as dark as it, green as it gets. Okay, these are brand new pens. Most of them I haven't used before, so that's not too bad getting it flowing there. I mean, it was like a, you know, in one second that uh, flow came out. These, now, when I was saying I was surprised how much it showed on top of this paper, it, it's because these gel pens, unlike a lot of the first incarnations of gel pens that some may or may not have worked for you or may not have worked for very long if it did work, it's because that gel was fairly thick and the inks were quite a bit, you know, more opaque than like this one here. But I'll take the, the um, reliability of them being a thinner ink and therefore a little bit more translucent over, you know, not working. I mean, who wouldn't, you know, especially for all of us that kind of bought many pens and. I don't know, several of mine just didn't even work. Uh, brand new. But I'm finding this set right here, and I'm guessing most other sets online of that nature are probably all of the same consistency. And um, work very well, you know, they just made the inks a little bit thinner. Okay. All right, see how dimensional that, look at that tree. I don't know, it looks kind of crazy, the bark. But this is, right in the background, it's looking very plain, but um, I can't say that I don't want it that way because I kind of do, um, you know, just to look a little bit lighter, all right? Because there are some treatments that I'm going to apply to the background here. Maybe it's time to do that. Which 
trying to decide if I want anything else in here in terms of additional tones or whatnot. I do have plans for one more layer of something in here, but we'll get to that when we get to that. All right, so I do have all kinds of brands of uh, pigment ink here. We have the Hero Arts color box and um, the Brilliance. Okay, color box Frost White, Hero Arts Unicorn, and Brilliance Moonlight White. Kind of more transparent, translucent, opaque. Not really, but you know. This one's a little bit, you know, a little bit translucent. This one's, you know, translucent, but a little bit more opaque. And this one's a little bit more opaque, but still fairly translucent. Okay, so nothing's 100% white when you apply it, especially when you apply it in the manner that I'm going to be going in. Let's start off with this color box white right now. And I want to kind of obscure some of my tree trunks up here, okay? Not the whole thing, but like the edges, okay? Like the light is coming from behind. I'm thinking here, maybe I do want a little bit of tone out here. To darken it in just a touch. And that way that backlighting might look a little bit more extreme. Do I do that? Or do I have the lighting coming in from all the way over here as well? Let's not vignette it, okay. I have a feeling that it might look better if it was slightly vignetted, but uh, I, I do that every time. All right, so adding this down, it's kind of obscuring some of the, uh, the, the tree limbs branches, which I kind of want to happen, or I do want to happen. It makes it look like the uh, the form's more dimensional when you kind of make parts of it um, kind of bathed in light a little bit. You're saying that the light is hitting it from, you know, a certain angle, uh, that it's not two-dimensional, so part of it is looking a certain way, okay? See that right there? All right, don't do, don't do it everywhere. Okay, here we go. Try to keep this, keep in mind where the camera is looking and not start doing things off camera, out of the frame. See that, how that's kind of lighter like that? And then just kind of oscillate it a little bit run it up a little bit, and then put some more up here. Yeek! You could do the whole edge, but I think it kind of looks more interesting when you don't do the whole thing. So there's this oscillation of light happening across something. So it's right down here. Maybe we'll come in here a little bit more. Up here. So that what it's doing? Now that light is starting to come in, it's starting to hit, you know, moisture in the air. Working it in, building up slowly. It's 
definitely looking a little bit lighter though. All right, you can put it in your foreground as well. Foreground trees. I really like that glow that this um, type of effect um, creates. It's like glowing light. I start off kind of a little bit more conservative <laughs> usually usually when I'm doing this type of thing and it's like by the end it's like slathering it on or it was kind of like that with the, uh, the alcohol pens I was being a little bit more you know uh, selective as far as my application went and you know when you kind of get start getting the feel of it then it's like all out you know applications of it when I kind of figured out where I wanted it to go So that beautiful kind of transition from uh, the background light. In this case, the background is just kind of more light. I don't know. This is mid-ground. The white is all kind of background in many ways. Let's get this one right over here.
Okay. Hmm. Got that light coming in from the background. Let's add a little bit of it down in this kind of open space. I think we can use some more shadows down there. I think that's what's kind of missing in here. We need to go darker. Hmm. Let me try something. In the spirit of kind of experimentation and uh, uh, breaking new ground and, I don't know, multimedia would probably be, you know, fantastic on here, but I'm going to try to stay away from uh, my dye-based inks and sponging technique. Okay, let's go on with a little bit more of uh, the, um, what is this? Yeah, just dark green, okay. And let's lay down a little bit more of this into this space right here, okay? When I say breaking new ground, I, I don't mean for stampers in general, I just mean for me. Me and my own work. There's a lot of very accomplished colored pencils and everyone's more accomplished than me in kind of pen work, so. I used to see a lot of uh, colored pencil scenes, um, only colored pencil. I, I don't see that too often anymore. Um, I really like colored pencil. I just haven't really spent too much time with it, you know, even though I have the set of uh, Prisma colors. I've had this set for a very long time. Okay, that was the dark green. Yeah, I can get a little bit darker, but, well, let, let me try to get a little bit darker. Okay. That is that. Let's go to black here. This is my black barrel prisma color. Okay. black is so sharp, it's uh, giving me a little bit more of a definitive line than I want. shadows down here. All these rocks a little bit more. Multimedia shadows. Coming around slowly but surely. I 
I do want some variation. I'm not just toning out everything in this whole area. I do want some lighter areas in here. Uh, for that variation. Yeah, surprisingly, this colored pencil goes on right over the top of that uh, alcohol ink very, very well. See, so I'm going like this. So it's not very dark or anything like that, but I can just see, I can just knock it down one value, you know, every time I do that. Hmm. I think that looks better. Yeah, let me link up some of these rocks a little bit more in shadow. All right, let's see what we can do about bringing in some much more brilliant white light into the scene. If we can, let's go to the Hero Arts Unicorn. <laughs> white pigment ink okay being careful not to take it in too fast Starting to get that kind of feeling, I guess, that we're I'm kind of going after. All right, 
going to plaster over some of those impressions that I didn't like that kind of got in there, you know, by mistake, right in between these trees. Now if there's an image where the foreground tree is just too kind of interconnected with the background, I'll knock the background one back a little bit in terms of uh, um, this uh, pigment ink, you know, value goes. Okay. Something like that. Down here, I can use a little bit more of a separation shell, kind of white out, not white out, but get some of this a little bit more pigment ink applied back here. Creates a little bit more of a spatial separation. You know, as I'm applying and going back in and kind of mopping off because this hero arts when I need to remind myself how wet it is just at one tap and it's really slathered with uh, ink so kind of need to be a little more careful about that get less ink when I'm inking up my cotton swab We're really doing quite a number on uh, <laughs> these background trees. We're really blotting off a lot of uh, ink off of them. How does that look? Does that look like kind of deeper kind of space to you, you know, in terms of uh, image depth? Hopefully. Let's add some of it down here to represent a little bit of kind of mist, something that that glowing light, white light, can kind of reflect off of.
Gotta have the, some of this mist kind of creeping into this area. There we go. That looks better. Okay. Let's keep going up the uh, opacity scale. And let's go into this brilliance. White. Eh, it's quite white. It'll knock <laughs> my mist stamping back a little bit more. But not entirely. <laughs> I can see. Those little types of things like that don't really bug me, though. I see these all as experiments. Nothing precious. I know I'm having fun while doing this. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I want a, you know, a scene that's interesting and, and that I like in the end, sure. But, um... For me, the biggest thing is the process. Uh, what is that saying? It's better to travel hopefully than arrive or something like that. And all those types of things. But I mean, this turning this, you know, and pushing this space right here with this ink or, you know, laying down some of that colored pencil, you know, textures down here. I mean, that, I mean, that's fun stuff to do. Or to see it, you know. Maybe the application isn't, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, that's so much fun. But it really is fun watching a scene kind of develop or something that you don't know if it works or not or, you know, you kind of get the answer, you know, immediately in one way or another. Um, I find that that's a good thing. All right. Let's turn this one a little bit more. Get a little light on it. Or at least on parts of it. Same thing over here. Doesn't mean it have to be as much as the background imagery, but just to kind of break it up, you know, those real solid lines. And you know, just to kind of oscillate them a little bit more in light and light and shadow.
kind of lightening up some areas a little bit more and more. I think when the, this pigment ink goes on to the scenes, it's it goes on a little bit more light, and then it dries dark from what I've found. So we have to push it a little bit far further than you think you want to go, because it'll dry dark. Okay. going more and more, because I'm finding, eh, it can take it, you know. No matter how much I lay down, it's not overdoing it, as far as I can tell. <laughs> eh, maybe a little bit too much there, just dampen off a little bit before it sets up. If this is on glossy card, so I can kind of just wipe it off at any time, even after it dries. On the mat, it might get set up, especially Brilliance Ink. The Brilliance is known to dry on, you know, glossy cardstock, so on matte cardstock, it'll dry even faster and maybe get set. Okay, let's see what we have here. All right, now one of the things I was considering on here was going for another layer of imagery, believe it or not. Alright, I had it in mind, and we're into experimentation, so let's just go for it. I'm going to be using this leafless pine stamp, and I'm going to be stamping it in my um, Versifying Black. <laughs> this sheet taking it off this freshly washed off a uh, block is sure is sure makes it uh, tacky. Okay. All right, let's see. Let's give it a try. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Or if it doesn't kind of lay down on there. But let's find out. I'm hoping it's the ink, maybe in a very thin form, maybe it wouldn't lay down, but maybe this Versafine is thick enough to where no matter what's underneath it, it will just... Uh, stamp out anyway, but we'll see. Okay, let me pull this out a little bit. Kind of pressing and holding. It's firm pressure, but not too much pressure. And I'm just kind of holding this down a little bit longer, thinking maybe some of the ink will transfer. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Okay, I think it did enough. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, it's right there. Enough to where we can do it again, though. I'll put it in an area <laughs> that'll be a little bit more apparent right here. I 
I'm looking at it, I'm trying to think if I want to go with a smaller version of it. Yeah. Overlaid the a lot of the pigment ink gets stamped out a little bit lighter, but still not bad. Okay, everything's looking a little bit more textured. Let's see. Let's go for another impression right down here, perhaps. Right in here. I guess that looks okay. I think I'm going to go for a medium one. I could use this same one again, but I want to go for a little bit of variation, okay? And just in terms of scale, kind of like we did, you know, with this larger version, a smaller version of that. All right, that was the leafless pines large. Let's go for the medium or, well, if not small. Let's go for the really small one. So let's really push it. Kind of pushing it all right here in the foreground. But Visible. Yeah, let's go right over here. Kind of groupings of five odd number. All right. Maybe I lied. <laughs> let's put one of these a little bit closer to the other. Boy, this is one really textured piece for not having very much spatial depth. You know, I don't have like a background cloud or something like that in here. I'd say this piece is looking reasonably deep and you know, I'm going from here to there. So far, there's the versifying black tree imagery in the foreground. I still want something else, I think, in this foreground. Mm. Just to kind of break it up a little bit more. Uh, maybe not that. I need something a little bit more dense. Reeds, no. I have some leaves somewhere. No, I'll get to that later, but... Alright. 
let's go on with some um, kind of little blooms or something like that down here. Let's say that there are some little white flowers on the forest floor. Ooh, I just accidentally touched one of my versifying trees there and it is really wet right now. So I need to be careful not to touch any of those trees for right now. It'll dry, but um, in time. Have these little white blossoms down here. I mean, they could be. They could represent just some highlights or something like that, too. I've got a few highlights on the branches and trees. Maybe I won't put too many though. Just a little bit to create somewhat of a slight continuity between other objects and this texturing that's going on in the uh, forest floor. And some on these branches, creating a little bit of a dimension. I said I would only do a few on those background, but it looks really fantastic on those tree limbs. Like I can really bring out if uh, like this tree limb is in front of this trunk, I can kind of highlight it going all the way, you know, to the the base of that um, uh, branch. So like this right here, I can kind of just go like this, like that. I 
All right. Let me see if I have that other. I want my rocks and leaves stamp. I want to put a few leaves down here. I might want a few leaves as well in like a green or something. Let me try this one right here. I don't know if this will show up, but I don't know, so far it's, these gel pens are working pretty decently. Yeah, okay, I can see my marks. I'm just putting in a few little, like, spring leaves on uh, the uh, that uh, branch stamp. Like it stands out a little bit. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, going to do them kind of multi-tonal. So I'll put down this, some of this, this green. It's like a medium tone green. And I'll try to um, lay down another version of green right over the top of it kind of offset a little bit so you get both greens. So go with that one. And let's go with the one quite a bit lighter if I could find one. Oh, it's glitter. Not that glitter would be bad. I'm not even sure if we'd be able to see any glitter on it. This one. This one's like a like a day glow green. <laughs> it's not even applying because I'm kind of putting it over the top of that other green. So I'll put it off a little bit off to the side, maybe. I mean, this is subtle stuff. It's you know, whether people would see it or not, I don't know. Okay, that one didn't make too big of a difference. Alright, let me see if I have one more thing on this scene. I think it'll be done. Alright, this is the rocks and leaves. I just want those leaves off the top. And I want them right down here. And we'll of course have to use Versafine for it to stamp over all that stuff that's going on down there. We want it really quite dark. Okay, I'll just go like about like so. This is the rocks and leaves again. It just looks like tone. You don't really see too much of it. But then again, it's just the, the tops of it, just the leaves. using this top portion of it. Okay, a little bit more. What I wanted to do is I just wanted to soften the bases of all these 
harsh verticals, so, you know, getting a little bit of some kind of object in there. Or texture, I guess, more than the object. Go with one out here, too. Kind of on the corner. Yeah, that kind of fills in that those areas a little bit, too. You know how I like to uh, kind of darken my corners with a vignette? Well, I'm darkening my corners right here with that little bit of texture. Like about like so. Kind of cluttered, but sometimes that's what we find in nature, right? A little bit of, you know, you know, uh, a mass of texture in a given area, depending on the foliage. All right, let's see what we have here. Reasonably complex looking scene, I guess. It's a half page, stamped on coated matte paper. Um, it looks fairly dimensional. I'm bending it right now, but it looks fairly dimensional because I stamped out the smaller versions of these foreground trees in a lighter value. You could use these ones again. Stamp them up there, do them in lighter value. They should it should give you a different look. But we're playing with scale a little bit on this one. Um, alcohol pens, kind of a fun medium to go in there, and I mean you can really see all those different textures in here from the uh, alcohol pens, scribbled over them a little bit with colored pencil. There's some gel pen little textures in here. If you kind of keep things in this, a similar value in terms of light and dark, they tend to blend in just fine and harmonize with each other, you know, pretty well. Um, but leaving those kind of the heavier saturations and darker saturations in the foreground really kind of reiterates this idea of this thought about space and uh, things being lighter in the distance. And then to go in and uh, to emphasize that, what we do is we went in there and we knocked down a lot of the uh, detail and uh, the values of those background, in this case, tree trunks, okay? And I really used a lot of some of that pigment ink around in here, you know, to knock those back in terms of like light hitting them from the background. And, uh, I don't know, to create this kind of idea of uh, kind of a definitive space within a scene, trying to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. And, uh, I don't know, I think it works pretty decently. Um, the media worked out pretty well. I was surprised at some of my uh, shuttle art pens being able to draw just right over the top of the uh, alcohol pens. And... Um, now, okay, I can see this um, VersaFine ink drying, and I think it's going to dry a little bit lighter. So what I'll do is, um, at some point in time, I'll, I'll spray this off and uh, with a spray fixative, and I think it'll kind of deepen the saturations of it. I have a feeling that the alcohol pens, I think, they are what they are. They're, that's what it's going to look like, I think. And those are dry already, for the most part. I mean, they might be a little bit tacky, but those will always look that vibrant. But um, the, it's the other things in the scene that'll kind of liven up a little bit with the use of some spray. But anyways, I think we have accomplished what we kind of set out to do in terms of creating depth. I wanted it to look more like a, a stronger bright light coming from the background. But if I did that, I would have to kind of darken in the sides right here with some toning, and I just kind of wanted to do a scene, you know, that didn't involve any kind of spongy, but a little bit of a vignette here. And this in here will look like it's glowing even more. Right now it just kind of looks like fog over all the uh, background, not that that's bad. But um, uh, a lot of different pigment inks in here of varying um, degrees of Opacity was fun to kind of work with, and uh, kind of it remains to be seen what that looks like when it dries. Because, like I said, the uh, I like this Hero Arts one, I think, kind of dries a little bit um, darker. 
than when it goes on. So, But for the most part, I think we have what we're going to have. And uh, I don't know. It was a fun experiment. I really enjoyed working with my alcohol pens and really happy that um, the certain types of media worked just fine layering over my under, you know, my base, base layers of uh, various media. So I, I guess it's not various media, you know, we're talking about alcohol inks, so. Uh, just some really fun stuff here, so, gosh, I can't stop adding some of this uh, pigment ink in here. <laughs> it just seems to get lighter and lighter, and the light becomes a little bit more, I don't know. I wouldn't call it brilliant. Kind of, it's more of like this creeping in diffusion, I guess, so. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the, I hope you liked the scene, I hope you enjoyed the video, and, uh, I don't know, uh, fun stuff with matte paper, and, uh, what are, what do you call it, direct paper, uh, alcohol pen work. Alright, thanks for watching.